Okay, let's go on. United Nations. It came into existence in 1945, before the end of the Second World War. In fact, the term the United Nations had started to be used during World War II to refer to what we now call the Allies. Um, the United States, Britain, um, France, Russia. Um, they were called the United Nations before the US even entered World War II. So the name United Nations actually predates that. But the organization uh, came into existence in 1945. Uh, with the initial 50 member states signing the UN Charter. So just to underline that is an actual international and there instrument. Was there is, Poland was the 51st country, but they weren't one of the initial um, 50 to sign it on that day. But there were 51 um, founding members. So there were six parts of the UN, five of them still exist. There are six parts of the UN, five of them still exist. The first two you should probably know. First two you should know. One is the General Assembly, it includes all members of the UN, and you need a two-thirds majority to pass non-binding resolutions. Okay? All countries, uh, all member countries are members of the General Assembly. Then you have the Security Council. Uh, when it was originally founded, I think it had 11 members, but today it has 15 members with the capacity to authorize use of military force, including five permanent members, and there's your five members, USA, Britain, France, Russia, China, with veto powers. So veto power means if they vote no, the resolution does not get through. So you need a majority of, I think it's nine out of the 15 need to vote in favor, and none of the five permanent members can vote against it. Um, the third one is the Trusteeship Council. This one no longer exists, okay? It supervised the administration of UN territories, but it was suspended in 1994 with the independence of Palau. So that is um, the body that took care of things like, for example, the occupied, or sorry, the Israeli-Palestinian territories, from 1945 till 1948. Former colonies, for example, would quite often become a UN trusteeship. Um, and again, the, the most well-known one is probably the, um, uh, the Palestinian territory, which was divided into Israel and Palestine, and that went to the UN for a vote. Uh, the other three bodies, the Economic and Social Council, that looks after things like health, education, economic, social, and cultural <laughs> issues, and also the International Court of Justice. Remember, the ICC is not part of the UN. The ICJ is, the ICC is not. The International Criminal Court is the ICC, the ICJ is the International Court of Justice. The International Court of Justice deals with civil matters, the International Criminal Court deals with criminal matters. But they're not part of the UN. Um, there was a question in the HSC, I think last year, that actually suggested that the ICC was a part of the United Nations. They lied. And that, that was actually incorrect. And there's a lot of, um, I spoke to some other legal studies teachers at a teachers conference recently. Um, and there was some not very happy legal studies teachers, let's put it that way. Because the ICC is not part of the US. Finally, the Secretariat. So that's your Secretary General. The, the individual and body that runs the UN. That's, that's your last part um, of the UN. Now, how is the UN different to the League of Nations? This is what you have to understand about the history of world order and how it's developed. In many ways, the UN learned from what the League of Nations um, have done. So, number one, it could compel member nations to contribute military peacekeeping forces, either troops or money. So Australia is required to provide peacekeeping troops or provide funding. There are Australian peacekeeping troops in places like the Sinai, they've gone to places like Bougainville, um, East Timor. Here's one other difference between the League of Nations and the UN. The Security Council has the power to authorize military force and has done so twice. Successfully in both cases, once in Korea, once in Iraq, 1990-1990. The League of Nations was not quite as successful. It did so in small conflicts. Um, it did not do so. Korea and Iraq actually saw major powers involved. Huge countries. Uh, Iraq, I think, was the fourth largest military power in the world at the time. Korea had the, um, the US and the Chinese military forces going up against each other. Um, also, the UN had all major global powers as members, and colonies and former colonies were also UN members. And a big thing there was the fact that the UN came around in time of decolonialization, and so you had all of these African and Southeast Asian countries that were also members of the UN. And that was a, a big change on the League of Nations. That said, there's still some criticisms made of the UN. So what are some we have here? It's undemocratic. All countries get one vote, regardless of population size, or whether their government was democratically elected. It's the same context of each country is equal. Yeah, in the, in the context of each country is equal, but then democratically um, functioning 
countries get the same say as dictatorships. So what else? The big powers still hold most of the power. The permanent five members retain their Security Council veto. So that's, that's more power than any other country gets. And 85% of the budget is paid for by 20 nations. And yet smaller nations want an equal say without equal contribution. Now there's, there's an issue that comes on. The US, for example, says we contribute a, a large chunk of the UN budget, so we should have a bigger say. But they're on the Security Council already. So. They're on the Security Council already, that's right. And they have mine. Yeah. But it's this question of how should you determine how much of a say countries have? Is it one person, one vote? Is it one country, one vote? Is it one dollar of funding provided? One Think about this last point. The UN failed to prevent or curb many Cold War era conflicts. I've been asked about the Cold War a few times. These are some conflicts um, or um, uh, yeah, conflicts that have not been prevented. Communist occupation of Eastern Europe, Arab-Israeli wars, the US war in Vietnam, the Soviet Union's war in Afghanistan. The UN was unable to prevent any of those despite the fact that numerous resolutions were passed opposing them.